Welcome to Citizenship Ready. This is Chapter 6 of Discover Canada. In this chapter you will listen to Canada's history. Because this is a very long chapter, I will split this chapter into smaller portions based on the topic. In this video, I will cover from the beginning of Canada's history to the abolition of slavery. Subscribe to Citizenship Ready channel to find the complete playlist. Aboriginal Peoples When Europeans explored Canada they found all regions occupied by native peoples they called Indians. Because the first explorers thought they had reached the East Indies. The native people lived off the land, some by hunting and gathering, others by raising crops. The Huron Wendat of the Great Lakes region, like the Iroquois, were farmers and hunters. The Cree and Dean of the Northwest were hunter-gatherers. The Sioux were nomadic, following the bison, buffalo, herd. The Inuit lived off Arctic wildlife. West Coast natives preserved fish by drying and smoking. Warfare was common among Aboriginal groups as they competed for land, resources, and prestige. The arrival of European traders, missionaries, soldiers, and colonists changed the native way of life forever. Large numbers of Aboriginals died of European diseases to which they lacked immunity. However, Aboriginals and Europeans formed strong economic, religious, and military bonds in the first 200 years of coexistence which laid the foundations of Canada. Coming next. The First Europeans. The First Europeans. The Vikings from Iceland who colonized Greenland 1,000 years ago. Also reached Labrador and the island of Newfoundland. The remains of their settlement, Lanse Ux Meadows, are a World Heritage Site. European exploration began in earnest in 1497 with the expedition of John Cabot, who was the first to draw a map of Canada's east coast. John Cabot, an Italian immigrant to England, was the first to map Canada's Atlantic shore. Setting foot on Newfoundland or Cape Breton Island in 1497 and claiming the new found land for England. English settlement did not begin until 1610. Jacques Cartier was the first European to explore the St. Lawrence River and to set eyes on present-day Quebec City and Montreal. Coming next. Exploring a river, naming Canada. Between 1534 and 1542, Jacques Cartier made three voyages across the Atlantic, claiming the land for King Francis I of France. Cartier heard two captured guides speak the Iroquoian word Kanata, meaning village. By the 1550s, the name of Canada began appearing on maps. Coming next. Royal New France. In 1604, the first European settlement north of Florida was established by French explorers Pierre de Monts and Samuel de Champlain. First on St. Croix Island in present-day Maine, then at Port Royal, in Acadia, present-day Nova Scotia. In 1608 Champlain built a fortress at what is now Quebec City. The colonists struggled against a harsh climate. Champlain allied the colony with the Algonquin, Montagna, and Huron, historic enemies of the Iroquois, a confederation of five, later six, First Nations who battled with the French settlements for a century. The French and the Iroquois made peace in 1701. The French and Aboriginal people collaborated in the vast fur trade economy, driven by the demand for beaver pelts in Europe. Outstanding leaders like Jean Talon, Bishop Laval, and Count Frontenac built a French empire in North America that reached from Hudson Bay to the Gulf of Mexico. Count Frontenac refused to surrender Quebec to the English in 1690, saying, My only reply will be from the mouths of my cannons. Pierre Le Moyne, Sieur d'Iberville, was a great hero of New France, winning many victories over the English, from James Bay in the north to Nevis in the Caribbean, in the late 17th and early 18th centuries. Sir Guy Carleton, Lord Dorchester. As governor of Quebec, defended the rights of the Canadians. 
defeated an American military invasion of Quebec in 1775, and supervised the Loyalist migration to Nova Scotia and Quebec in 1782-83. Coming next. Struggle for a continent. In 1670, King Charles II of England granted the Hudson's Bay Company exclusive trading rights over the watershed draining into Hudson Bay. For the next 100 years the company competed with Montreal-based traders. The skilled and courageous men who traveled by canoe were called voyagers and coureurs de bois, and formed strong alliances with First Nations. English colonies along the Atlantic seaboard, dating from the early 1600s, eventually became richer and more populous than New France. In the 1700s France and Great Britain battled for control of North America. In 1759, the British defeated the French in the Battle of the Plains of Abraham at Quebec City, marking the end of France's empire in America. The commanders of both armies, Brigadier James Wolfe and the Marquis de Montcalm, were killed leading their troops in battle. The Province of Quebec Following the war, Great Britain renamed the colony the Province of Quebec. The French-speaking Catholic people, known as Habitants or Canadians, strove to preserve their way of life in the English-speaking, Protestant-ruled British Empire. Tradition of Accommodation To better govern the French Roman Catholic majority, the British Parliament passed the Quebec Act of 1774. One of the constitutional foundations of Canada, the Quebec Act accommodated the principles of British institutions to the reality of the province. It allowed religious freedom for Catholics and permitted them to hold public office, a practice not then allowed in Britain. The Quebec Act restored French civil law while maintaining British criminal law. Coming next. United Empire Loyalists. In 1776, the 13 British colonies to the south of Quebec declared independence and formed the United States. North America was again divided by war. More than 40,000 people loyal to the crown, called Loyalists, fled the oppression of the American Revolution to settle in Nova Scotia and Quebec. Joseph Brandt led thousands of Loyalist Mohawk Indians into Canada. The Loyalists came from Dutch, German, British, Scandinavian, Aboriginal and other origins and from Presbyterian, Anglican, Baptist, Methodist, Jewish, Quaker, and Catholic religious backgrounds. About 3,000 black loyalists, freedmen and slaves, came north seeking a better life. In turn, in 1792, some black Nova Scotians, who were given poor land, moved on to establish Freetown, Sierra Leone, West Africa, a new British colony for freed slaves. Coming next. The Beginnings of Democracy Democratic institutions developed gradually and peacefully. The first representative assembly was elected in Halifax, Nova Scotia, in 1758. Prince Edward Island followed in 1773, New Brunswick in 1785. The Constitutional Act of 1791 divided the province of Quebec into Upper Canada, later Ontario, which was mainly Loyalist, Protestant and English-speaking, and Lower Canada, later Quebec, heavily Catholic and French-speaking. The Act also granted to the Canadas, for the first time, legislative assemblies elected by the people. The name Canada also became official at this time and has been used ever since. The Atlantic colonies and the two Canadas were known collectively as British North America. The first elected assembly of Lower Canada, in Quebec City, debates whether to use both French and English, January 21, 1793. Coming next. Abolition of Slavery Slavery has existed all over the world, from Asia, Africa and the Middle East to the Americas. The first movement to abolish the transatlantic slave trade emerged in the British Parliament in the late 1700s. In 1793, Upper Canada, led by Lieutenant Governor John Graves Simcoe, a Loyalist military officer, became the first province in the empire to move toward abolition. 
In 1807, the British Parliament prohibited the buying and selling of slaves, and in 1833 abolished slavery throughout the empire. Thousands of slaves escaped from the United States, followed the North Star, and settled in Canada via the Underground Railroad, a Christian anti-slavery network. <laughs>